I have a couple of old Chevy starters here that I'm going to take all apart and see if I can make a couple of really good ones. This one here has got a broken uh, solenoid on it, but I can just get rid of that. I'm going to take this apart, and uh, these uh, Chevy starters were quite common in a lot of 70s, 80s, and even 90s uh, Chevys, uh, pickups, cars, trucks. Uh, some of the patterns was a little different. I noticed that in my car, the, the bolt pattern is straight across here instead of like this. And in, in my truck and van, they're like this. But basically, this, the rest of the starter is all the same. It's just a bolt pattern to bolt them up to the engine is uh, a little different. What I do first is take the back off. A couple of these brushes look like this one here is just about wore out, so I would probably replace all the brushes. Take this main battery connection off the solenoid. Some of these are a little bit longer than others. Then, take the solenoid off. Nowadays everything is throw away or buy new and it's getting ridiculous with these throw away stuff. And you can just kind of turn this because it's it's fitted in behind here so you have to turn it a little bit and you can pull the solenoid right out. There's a spring that holds it back and this thing this thing is a mag magnetic creates a magnetic field in here sucks this back and at the same time pulls the starter drive out so it engages like that. So now when you have this off and this off the rest will just fall apart here. Well not quite that easy I guess. Time you have to put a little screwdriver in here and try a little bit. And then this will just come apart. This wasn't supposed to fall out that easy, but ever. Then you just pull this the armature out of out of here. 
and now you can replace the brushes by just taking these things out and replacing the brushes on this. I took this other, I found another starter that was a little better shape apart here and uh, see the brushes uh, probably are a little better shape armature is pretty good shape except this commentator here has to be it the copper here gets worn out and then it starts to ride on these on this uh, fiber stuff in between so you have to groove it out so what I do is I take a, a hacksaw blade and it fits right in there and you have to cut these out a little bit so what you have to do here is make sure you cut every one of these grooves out as long as there's a little bit of a a groove because what happens here as the brushes are running over this it's wearing out the copper and then this stuff that's in between gets actually a little bit higher than the copper and then the brushes don't make contact on the copper part here and they start to arc and do a lot of sparking so if you just clean these out a little bit and make a little bit of a groove in every one like that so that there's a groove in there so it'll ride more on the copper instead of on that stuff so you got to go all around and do them all like that once you have all these grooves cut out you take a little bit of emery cloth and kind of remove all the little scratches that I made not too much just to get all the nice scratches out and then you have a nice smooth commentator just put it on there so it makes a noise and if you check every one of these to ground none of them should have continuity There, that checks out good. Now we'll put a new drive in. There's a little clip inside here. This actually, this here is the way it goes. This part here is just kind of fits inside there to hold that clip in there. So you take this part off and then this this part comes down and you can take this clip out and that's how the drive comes out. Once you pound this down you should be able to just pop this up here Sometimes it's a little tough, but just lift it out of that groove. There, and then it just pulls right off. And then you can pull this other part off. And take this off. Make sure it's the same drive. Clean this up a little bit nice.
You can also add a, just a tiny bit of, I put a little lithium grease on there. Not too much, just a tiny bit. Then you just take your drag and put it on there. Make sure it kind of works. You put this first piece on. And you slip your clip over. Sometimes it's pretty tight. Slip it down till it goes in a groove. And what you have to do is fit that clip right inside this little thing. Make sure that that thing is kind of locked in place. And then this little collar goes on top. There you once you have that collar on top there. That's it for this part. Now we take the solenoid here off this nose cone and here's the spring. This spring always holds these the starter drive right back here all the time so that's got to be in there. Now what we're going to do is take this solenoid apart and see what's it like inside. We take these two screws off that hold the top on. See, and that's what it looks like on the inside here. This here is the battery terminal that comes from your battery. And it makes contact on this. And this always turns so you don't burn out one spot at a time. You see how it's slowly kind of burnt out. Every time you engage the starter, this thing goes, comes up like this and makes contact in here and turns the starter on. And this here bolt can wear out really really good just on one side but if the solenoid is not working good you can take this bolt off and just turn it around and it'll wear out on the other side and it'll go good for a while. But the rest of this looks pretty good in here. What you can do to this little thing here is take the sandpaper, a little bit of sandpaper and clean this off a bit all around and it'll make 
better contact. So you'll notice here that this here is, is where it made contact is right here and on, on some of them they're just about worn right out there and that's why it doesn't make good contact so so what you can do is take this bolt out and turn it half a turn and then this other side will make contact and it'll work it'll run good for quite a while we can put this all back there it's a little tricky sometime but I checked these brushes out and they're just about like new they haven't been replaced too long ago here I have um, a couple few new ones this is a brand new one and there's not much difference so I'm gonna leave them in there uh, how you take these out is you pull this pin out this pin right here and this assembly comes out you just unscrew these uh, uh, brushes, screw new brushes in, and then slip this back in. This is kind of tricky because it's spring-loaded. There's a spring you have to put in behind here, and you have to get that pin just right. But I see these brushes are pretty good, so I'm just going to leave that part. I cleaned this uh, back plate nicely and uh, usually what I do here is I take and I change this bushing out but I don't have this little bushing for this one so I'm just going to leave this one in there but what you normally do is take a chisel and just get in behind it chisel it out and then take a new one uh, something like this one but this is the wrong size and then just pound it back in but I do have one like this here for the front bushing. The front bushing is way down there right in the, in the nose. And what you have to do is chisel it out. You have to take a tiny little chisel and get it chiseled out. So you have to take a, a chisel and knock it out because there's no way to push it through. Because it's all closed in this nose. So you have to take a chisel and get it out. I've already chiseled it out and I'm just about ready to pound this new one in. See I've got the, the new bushing in there now I'm just going to take a block of wood a long piece of, piece of block of wood and I'm going to gently pound it back in there. There, I got her in. There you can see I pound the new bushing back in. Okay, now we clean this up good, make sure 
that these shaft and everything is nice and clean. And we'll put this in here first. And what you got to do is spread these brushes out like that one and then spread this one out and it'll fit right over the commentator. You got that part done. Don't forget to put a little grease in these bushings Then I take this and I fit this in here. You got to make sure that those little things are in this little channel thing here. So it works back and forth. And then once you got that part in, you just line up the front nose like so. There's a little tit here, a little pin. You gotta match that up with that little hole right there. See that little pin has to match that little hole. Once you have that in, I guess I don't have it in. There. Got that in. Now we can put the back plate in. Put a little grease inside here. There's kind of a, a kind of a rubbery washer that fits over here, and then goes your back cover. Then these bolts fit in like that. Sometimes a little tricky to get these in. There. Don't have to tighten these up too much, just a little loose for now until we get the solenoid in. Now this little lip, this little lip here on the solenoid has to fit in behind right there. Put the spring in. Make sure that cylinder fits in there. Push it in, turn it, and then it stays in there until you put these bolts in. Then we put this here back in.
there now you tighten all these bolts up tighten everything up and then we're going to give it a test drive so what I'm going to do here is put a jumper cake wire from here from the main battery to the starter and this will be as if you've turned the ignition switch to start and then we'll see if it if a starter turns over and see if the solenoid engages we'll just ground out the chassis and we'll take this positive and put it right to here There you have it, it works like a charm. And that's uh, how I rebuild a starter. Now, there's maybe different ways to do it. Maybe there's an easier way, I don't know. This is what I, the way I like to do it. It works for me.